Hi friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Today we will see how to install a checkpoint on VMware Workstation just for the lab purpose. So let's get started. So guys, here is my OVA file that I've created out of uh, the ISO image that I downloaded from the website. So you can go ahead and register yourself and download the ISO file. So I have customized my VMware workstation settings so I don't have to again and again do the same procedure. So let's get started. So first of all, we are going to configure management. And then we are going to install the gateway, which is our firewall. I think I made one more video where uh, I address the issue with respect to the uh, browser's uh, refresh rate, which will not let you uh, load the firewall uh, GUI. This is, by the way, AT10. So we are going to import one more virtual machine, which will be our firewall. All right, so we have two virtual machines here. Let's power it on. Let me expand this and show you. Uh, let us do the same thing for the other one as well so that we don't waste time
This process will install checkpoint Gaia R8010 operating system and associated application. Okay. 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 You will have to enter your admin account password. Here I'm going to have DHCP enabled, so you have to enter, you have to navigate using tab and then hit space. It will select the DHCP. Yes, okay. Let's go ahead and do this for the other one as well. Okay, I want to proceed. Admin password. So I'm checking the first one. Hit space. Okay. Continue. So we'll have to wait for some time until VMware completes the installation. I already have the smart console configured AD10, so I don't have to worry.
Okay. Reboot TVM. Once it is done, we'll move on to GUI to deploy our roles. But this is just the VM. We have to assign roles to each VM, whether it is going to be the gateway or it is going to be the management. basically here you need three things one is the firewall other one is is the management server and then the smart console server so what i'm doing is the base machine itself uh, is having the smart console running so i can connect to the management which will have a secure communication to the firewall using sic So you can see here, my IP address is not updated. Let's do one thing. Okay, this is the manually configured address. So I have to interface updated. So I should be able to log into the device using that IP. This is a firewall. Anyways, the role is not yet assigned to the VM. So it is just a VM. By default, you will have SSH and HTTPS access to uh, the uh, firewall and the gateway, management gateway.
Okay, people, I can see that there is an issue here. So I'll have to put it to my page, put it to to that was the reason why i was not getting the ip because i somehow forgot to check the mapping anyways not an issue All right, guys, I have checked the mapping and everything looks fine. I'm able to ping. So I should be able to do the putty. So you can see I'm able to log into each one of the VM that I've created. All right, guys, uh, let's move on to, okay, before starting, um, let me show you the issue with Kaya 8010. So this is the issue with Gaia 8010. So you will have to update the refresh rate. That is what I'm going to do now. You can get this from my uh, channel. Uh, there's a video that I've created for uh, this issue where the browser is unable to load the GUI because of some refresh rate issue. Anyways, I uh, know the fix here. So let's log in individually. So here, you will have to get to the expert mode, which is uh, more or less uh, like a shell. 
So first of all, you'll have to set expert mode password. Uh, before that, you'll have to uh, lock on to uh, the database. Okay. So now we are in the expert mode. I have copy pasted the configuration. This is more or less uh, kind of scripting that we have done to fix this issue. Here also, you'll have to lock on to the database first. And then set the expert mode password. Get to the expert mode. Copy paste this script. That's it, guys. I should be able to log into Gaia now. This is my management server. And this is going to be my firewall gateway. So the concept is very simple here. You can have multiple firewall here and you can add uh, all those firewall to your management server so that you can get the access of the management server via smart console and then you can configure all the configurations like um, mat policy allow deny interface related uh, or the device related configuration, you can do it via the GUI of specific uh, firewall. Okay, so this is going to be my management server let's try to put something here This is going to be my management server. Don't play around with the timings because it might, you know, then create issue with respect to the certificate that it is going to use for authentication. So never play around with this. So you can see here, it is giving me the option of a single standalone deployment and distributed deployment, where as in one uh, virtual machine or one node can act as gateway as well as management server. I don't want that, so I have a distributed deployment here. So I will go ahead, uncheck this one.
you can use the same administrator that you have created. I don't want to restrict the access as of now because this is my lab um, deployment. Yes, I think it's going to restart the machine once it is once it is done. So let's move on to the next machine, which is our firewall. This is going to my secure gateway. So I'm checking, unchecking the security management and I want to have cluster. Um, right now I don't have the second uh, firewall deployed here. So somehow in future I'll do the deployment so that I can test the uh, cluster Excel, which is uh, the HA. This is a sick communication between the management server and the gateway, which is the firewall. So uh, there is a separate key for that. So I'm going to put that here. That's it, perfect. So let's proceed with this. And this is going to restart my system and going to take some time. By the way, the deployment is kind of hectic but it is worth understanding of the step. Okay. This is the final step before we actually get into the bikes and configure something. See now the uh, the node is starting so that it can take effect all the changes that we have done. Once it gets restarted, 
and then it'll start taking the roles which we have assigned during the installation or the configuration. This might take some time. So you can see here, I am able to log into uh, the device, which is our firewall. You can see here the role, checkpoint security gateway, and then the interface configuration, the static route. We are yet to have our management gateway installed. Uh, let's wait for some time until uh, this is done and then we will try to log into the management server via the smart console we will have we have almost done So these are the configuration that you can uh, have it change from the GUI. This is the device, the configuration that you see here in the GUI for the firewall. These are the parameters that you can change from the GUI. And then the other parameters like uh, layer seven filter, you know, DLP or policy or NAT, you will have to get the access of the management server and then integrate your firewall into the management server and then you have to push the change. I'll show you in some time. Yeah, almost done. By the way, checkpoint is the only firewall which gives you, uh, you know, 14 days of trial so that you can make use of all the software plates, unlike any of the firewall. I, I don't see it with the 40 gate or uh, Juniper or uh, Palo Alto. If you deploy the OVA file or if you deploy the VM to test it in your network before you uh, get it into the production, well, I don't think you can have the layer seven filters or the software blades, you know, installed in that. That is the reason why I like Checkpoint. I like the Checkpoint architecture and I am pretty comfortable working on this firewall.
I'm going to stop the video here because uh, it is going to, you know, prolong the length. So I'll resume it once it is done. All right, guys, uh, seems like the configuration is done. Let's hit OK. And then you can see here I am into uh, the GUI of management uh, server. It looks exactly same as uh, the one with firewall role. You can see here the role is gateway which is firewall and you can see here the role is management 8010 okay so you can see here to access and to have configuration related to firewall ipsec vpn application you are filtering etc you will have to have the smart console so let's power on our smart console and let's try to you know configure something So you can see I'm not able to uh, ping 104 because it has taken the role of uh, firewall and by default there is no policy which allows me to ping the interface of the firewall. This is my management server's IP, which I manually configured. You can see here, 103. Let's try to get access. Might take some time. The first time you're accessing it. Seems like the server is yet to initialize all the service. Let's wait for some time and then try. You can see here it is still showing server is initializing 
all the configuration. Okay, he is going to launch the application in some time. And uh, like I was telling that I'm pinging the interface IP, but I'm not able to ping it. 104, because there's no policy. And the only way you can configure a policy is by taking control of management server, adding the firewall there and then doing it so you can see here this is my checkpoint management okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add my Okay, so my gateway name is For the strict communication between the server and management server and the firewall, you will have to enter the same password which you used while configuring. Okay, now it is going to retrieve all the interface related details and then we are good to have this, okay. You can see here, it has retrieved all the information. It is asking me to enable what are the services that I want right now. I am um, with the basic settings that I have. You can see here, secure internal communication trust established. Okay, so what I was telling is uh, unless and until I have the security policy here, I'll not be able to ping the firewall. 
So you can see here, this is the default rule, which is not allowing me to ping it. So I'm going to change it to accept. Source any, destination any, accept. Install policy. So it is asking me the target where I should install the policy. So it is uh, right now deploying the policy and let's see what happens when it is installed. All right, guys, uh, the issue was, uh, let me show you. Out of some reason, my firewall was not able to, uh, you know, pull the status of uh, ETH1 because that was uh, basically mandatory to have spoofing in its place. You can see here there is no there is only one interface defined for object firewall 01. At least one more interface must be configured for this object in order to use anti spoofing spoofing feature. So I guess I enabled that anti uh, spoofing feature. So that was the reason why it was not letting me 
commit the changes. So what I did was I uh, went to the firewall, clicked on the management interface, action, new interface, and I added the ETH1, which was not getting populated into the smart console, basically. So here I have the security policy installed, and like I was telling, see, it started pinging. All right, guys, um, thank you for uh, watching this video and stay tuned for more updates. Please do subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit like if you really enjoyed this video. Uh, please motivate me by subscribing to my channel. And whenever I will upload any video, you will get the notification at first. So, all right, guys, uh, have a good day. Bye bye.